Hi. Welcome to another movie plot. Spoilers ahead. Floating above the Earth in a space pod is the astronaut Pericles, who is a chimpanzee so naturally he begins to freak out when things go awry. Thankfully it is just a simulation ran by his co-worker Captain Leo Davidson, who calms the frantic chimp with the threat of no treats. The year is 2029, and the United States Air Force has a space station called the Oberon, training primates for space missions. Leo's favorite simian superstar is the chromosome-enhanced Pericles, having spent the last two years in space together. Leo's personal time is cut short when the Oberon's power fluctuates and momentarily drops out. Commander Karl Vazic, alerts them that an electromagnetic storm is approaching the station, and Leo is reluctantly made to send Pericles to investigate it. The chimp is launched out of the Oberon in a pod and begins running through all of his regular operations. But as soon as he reaches the storm his signal disappears. Since Carl deems the storm too hazardous to send anything else in in search of Pericles, Leo does it himself, flying directly into the storm to find his friend. He spots Pericles but his pod suddenly disappears in a flash of light, before the same phenomena knocks Leo out of the storm and kills his pod's power. Carl receives a message from a future version of himself, crying Mayday as the space station is crashing. Another beam of light hits Leo knocking him through space and time, appearing above the planet Ashler in the year 5021. He viciously plummets down to the surface, crashing through trees and sinking to the bottom of a pond. He emerges and quickly crosses path with a local tribesman Karubi, and his daughter Dana, who ignore him and run away. He decides to join the herd of fleeing humans when he sees they are running from humanoid horse riding armor wearing apes, snatching humans up and throwing children into sacks. While Leo avoids the snatchers Dana and Karubi get captured, but Leo comes up on the edge of the jungle to see there is no escaping the apes, before getting knocked out by a jumper. The captain wakes up as the humans are all being put in cages, and realizes that the humanoid apes can speak when he meets chimpanzee General Thay, and is second in command the gorilla colonel at her. He is hauled back to their oasis in the desert along with the other slaves, being heckled through the streets and arriving at the home of slave owner Limbo, an orangutan who scoffs at the merchandise but buys the whole lot. Thade arrives in a bad mood, having had his crops raided by humans, so Limbo tells of an old country remedy for protecting your farm by gutting a human and stringing their carcass up, but the human rights faction is already onto him about that. He buys a little human slave girl for his niece's birthday, that comes with a free collar and a warning to get rid of it by puberty. The humans are taken out and branded as Limbo's property. So activist Ari bursts in knocking the iron away and demanding human freedom. Leo takes Ari hostage with the hot iron but asks her to help him, so she decides to buy him and Dana. No, no, that, that would be extensive. Ari has the two work as servants in her father's house, Senator Sondar, but is told to keep them out of sight until housebroken. Leo tries to escape but is kept a close eye on by Ari's bodyguard Kroll, who begins training Leo by having him feed the guests. A few senators including Nato attend the feast as well as Thade and Adder, where Thade tells Sondar that his father's illness keeps him from attending. Wild humans now outnumber apes 4 to 1, as they continue to breed, so Nato's wife Nova suggests sterilizing them all, but finds it would be way too costly. Bow your head! The apes all worship a Jesus-type savior from long ago called Seamus, of who Thade is a direct descendant of. He mocks Ari's notion that a human has a soul by looking down Leo's throat, causing Ari to lose her appetite. Wanting Sondar's influence Thade constantly pursues Ari in attempts to form a relationship, but she knows his hidden motives and is always leaving him hanging. This time though he is met by two guerrilla guards who have something to show him, out of town and into the jungle. They show him where the astronauts pod crashed and he decides to reward the messengers, by beating their heads in with some impractical weapons. When Krull goes to sleep Leo breaks out with Dana and one of the house slaves named Tyvel. They break back into Limbo's house to free the rest of Dana's family, a man named Gunner and a boy named Burn. They also free the little girl from her cage, before being found by Ari and her other house slave Bon, who takes the little girl away from this movie. Ari joins the rebellion and sneaks them out of the city, but is spotted by Adder who starts to give chase. So Karubi sacrifices himself to save his daughter, ultimately doing nothing to the gorilla and being cut down by Thade, the little devil on Adder's shoulder. Arriving at Leo's crashed pod Kroll takes offense to being called a monkey, as monkeys are below apes on the evolutionary chain, and just above humans. Apes freak out around water since they can't swim, and Leo dives down and retrieves supplies from the wreckage, finding Thane's victims on the way. He emerges with a gun and communicator, realizing that the Oberon has already reached the planet and that his team is probably waiting for him. Sorcery. As soon as they start to head in its direction, 
Limbo shows up trying to reclaim his merchandise, but is made aware of who's in charge when Leo shows him what a gun can do. Not wanting to kill an unarmed ape they bring him along, and Kroll smashes the gun as gun bad. Back at Ape City Thade convinces Sanders to declare martial law, giving him full control of the ape army to retrieve the senator's daughter. He visits his father before setting off, who tells him the apes were once man's slaves and kept under control with guns. Saying that humans' ingenuity goes hand in hand with their cruelty, and to not let Leo reach their forbidden area of Kalima. He damns humans to hell, then dies. Reaching the forbidden zone Leo hears that the ape's bible teaches Seamus was the first ape, breathe life into it Kalima and will one day return. But first the group must make it over a river guarded by an ape outpost, currently overseen by Adder in search of the spaceman. During the cover of darkness, the group steal some horses to get across the river and set a flare off as a distraction, catching them off guard as they ride through the camp. An angry Adder manages to bolo Leo's horse requiring him to swim across the river with a terrified Ari on his back. Limbo no longer needs to be restrained as the apes tried to kill him as well, and news of all this makes it back to Fade, who rallies the ape army and marches on Kalima. Kroll stays up all night on watch, and we hear from Ari that he was once a great general whose pupil was Adder, but had his career ruined for opposing Fade. The next morning the group arrive at the holy ruins of Kalima, to find that it is just a corruption of a partially obscured sign, actually being the millennia-old remains of the Oberon. The ship is powered by inexhaustible fuel cells so Leo is able to access the logs, showing Kurt and the space station crashed thousands of years ago while searching for him. Leo deduces that the vortex pushed him forward in time yet not the Oberon, with the apes evolving rapidly and taking control of the vessel. All led by a particularly aggressive chimpanzee named Seamus. With all humans and apes descending from those survivors of the Oberon, the surrounding people begin to flock to the Holy Land in search of the one who defies the apes. After an interspecies love triangle begins to form, Ari goes to the ape camp to see General Thade in an attempt at wooing him into submission. When smelling human on her he brands her as one and sends her back to die with her new friends. That night Leo comes up with a plan, requiring all the humans to be seen by the apes in plain sight. In the early hours of the morning Thade and his army descend on the humans, where a couple await them as bait. When the first wave of apes is sent and hundreds of chimpanzees rush the main group and chase the captain back to the Oberon but he activates its thrusters and obliterates the entire threat. The humans then swarm the surviving soldiers and beat them to a pulp. With only enough juice to perform that once, Leo was hoping to trick the rest of the apes into fleeing, but Thade is relentless. He charges the entire rest of the force straight into battle, leaping off his horse and joining the fun, using his primary move of throwing the enemy off him, and even using his hat. To show their strength the gorilla breaks Gunner's back just with a push, and Tybal tries to push one to do his part but is picked up by another and killed. When Dana is almost taken out, Ari saves her life and assists in killing her own kind. Adder spots Leo and goes for revenge, but Kroll having been slicing his way through the apes intercepts his old protege, and the two lay down their weapons for an epic throwdown. But the younger and much stronger Adder instantly gets mount and hammer fists him to death. When Leo comes across Thade on the battlefield he gets the throw treatment, and just before Thade finally kills his biggest annoyance everyone is stopped in their tracks by a loud bang. A familiar vehicle descends from the sky and lands, opening to reveal it is piloted by Pericles the Great. All the apes interpret his arrival as the second coming of Seamus their god, and hostilities toward humans suddenly cease, though not from Thade. Pericles was pushed forward in time as Leo was, and has just now arrived on the planet. Pericles runs into the ruins of the Oberon recognizing that it's his home, and Leo goes after him but is followed by General Thade, who continues to try kill Leo while Ari buys him time to get inside the ship. Thade again beats Leo down and is about to kill him but Pericles tries to help, getting thrown by Thade hard against a wall. Now having a second gun from the pod, Leo shoots at the general but hits his armor and has it taken from him. Seeing that Thade is standing within the pilot's deck Leo closes the door and traps him inside. Adder sees the damage that Thade has done to Pericles, deciding to side with Leo when learning that Seamus was really the villain. Killed everybody. Thade fires the weapon repeatedly at the door but the ricochet causes Thade to huddle under a control panel. Adder mourns his old mentor having killed him due to Thade's lie, and Pericles reveals that he was just a bit shaken up, so Leo leaves him with Ari to take care of while planning on taking the pot. Leo kisses Ari, then Dana kisses him. While stealing his things Limbo, thanks Leo for opening his eyes to a world of trade with the humans, then starts selling aspirin to a bunch of kids. Climbing aboard Pericles' undamaged pod, 
Leo leaves the Planet of the Apes and flies it directly into the electromagnetic storm, getting hit by the light and sent back in time. Leo finds his way home and crashes down to Earth in Washington, D.C., outside of the Lincoln Memorial, but approaches it to find it is now a monument to General Fay. Simeon police officers, firefighters and news reporters all descend on a confused Leo. And the movie ends. Planet of the Apes is a 2001 science fiction adventure film directed by Tim Burton. Very, very extensive. From a screenplay by William Broyles Jr., Lawrence Connor, and Mark Rosenthal. Take your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Stars Mark Wahlberg, Tim Roth, Helena Bonham Carter, Michael Clark Duncan, Paul Giamatti, and Estella Warren. What do you know about my father? <laughs> the stars of the original 1986 film Charlton Heston and Linda Harrison also make appearances. I, I, I was just getting ready to make my move. The cast signed for a sequel that would explain the final scene in DC, but it was canceled after the film's poor critical reception. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Now I can barely climb a tree. <laughs>